be seen. When my daughter Sophia first started dance, she early on discovered the joy of spinning. Especially if someone else would hold her hand, she could spin and she loved it. And so one day, it was a Friday, when uh, Olivia was gone for the day, and uh, Sophia came up to me and she wanted to be spun. Okay, and so I held her hand and spun her and she giggled and spun her and she giggled and squealed. And, and uh, you know how it is when you're young, everything is very amusing and you do it again and again and again and again and again. And, uh, and I did it one more time, except this time there was not laughter. There was a little bit of silence and a small whimper. And she held her right elbow with her left and, and, and she, she stopped using it. And I had that horrible, horrible moment where you think, that's it, I have just got Parent of the Year Award. I broke her. Right? That sick, horrible sensation when you have messed up and messed up badly. I, I tend to think of that as the of the year awards, and there are multiple of them. I have gotten parent of the year. I've gotten husband of the year. I've gotten pastor of the year. Maybe you have a few of those awards. Have you gotten any of those awards? Right. There's a couple of them, right? Any categories I missed? <laughs> We listen today as Peter gets his of the year award. He gets disciple of the year. Right? At the Passover, as the disciples and Jesus are sharing the Last Supper, Peter is the one who hears Jesus says, uh, when Jesus say, I will be struck down and all, all of you will scatter, Peter's the one who says, not me, I will be right by your side. I'm, I'm right here. I, I, my, my name is Peter, a rock. I'm going to be right there for you, Jesus. And Jesus looks at him and says, no, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. And so after the meal, uh, Jesus is arrested, and, and uh, Jesus is going through the trial. And on the periphery of the action, we have Peter, who is gathered around a charcoal uh, uh, fire. The, the, the Gospel writer very specifically tells us, charcoal fire. And all of the rest of Scripture, it just says fire. It's all it ever says is the word for fire. There are two times in Scripture where the, gospel, the writer uses the word for charcoal fire, and this is one of them. And so uh, Peter is gathered around the charcoal fire and he is asked, hey, weren't you with... No, 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 no. But wait a minute. Nope, nope, not me. Didn't you grow up? Nope, 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 nope. nope. Right? Three times. And then the cock crows and that's it, right? Peter gets his of the year award, disciple of the year, and his gut twists up in a knot and you know that, sensa that horrible sensation. And, and then the story keeps on moving, right? Jesus is, is uh, cr tried and he is taken to Golgotha and he is crucified and he is, dies and he is buried. And, and Peter Peter is just as confused as anyone else at uh, when, when Jesus uh, is resurrection, Jesus is alive, Jesus shows up to the disciples, and, and Peter is there when Thomas makes his great confession of faith. Thomas says, my Lord and my God, like that, that is the confession, that is the single cleanest confession of faith in all of scripture, my Lord and my God. I mean, so Peter is right there when this happens, and, and so Jesus is alive, and, and what's going to happen now? Well, we know Peter, right? Let's review what we know about Peter. Peter is the one who, if there's something to be said, he says it. And when there's not something to be said, he says it anyways, right? Peter is the one that when Jesus goes up the mountain and uh, takes two, three disciples with him, the other two disciples don't say anything. But when Jesus is there with Elijah and Moses and they're talking, Peter's the one who says, hey, hey, God. Let's throw up some tents, right? P Peter is the one, when Jesus is walking across the water, in the middle of the storm, Peter's the one who goes, Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Can I get out of the... Can, can I walk on the water too? Like, Peter is the one who runs towards the problem, gets involved, he wants to get out a whiteboard, start taking notes, organize it, and do it, and go. Like, Peter always wants to be running, doing, and doing something, right? 
And, and so at this moment at which Jesus has gone through death, come out the other side, resurrection, Jesus has said to Peter, like, you are my rock. Upon you I shall build my church. This is the moment where we expect Peter to be building the church. We expect him to be organizing these disciples who have been trained for years to do this, and now is the moment for them to go and to do what they've been trained to do. And so what do we find Peter doing? He's gone fishing. Gone fishing. Do you think at any point in Peter's life up till now he's had the time to just go fishing? Right? I, I don't think so. But And fishing is a mighty fine sport. I'm glad people enjoy it. And if you catch it, I'll always eat it. But fishing is not exactly an activity for someone like Peter who is young and driven and just got things to do. And so of all the things we would expect Peter be, to be doing, why is he fishing? Well, let's think about it. When you fail miserably, horribly, badly, right? And, and you got that feeling in the pit of your stomach and your throat gets tight and you just, ah, uh, right? Do any of you start rehashing it again and again and again and again? I can't believe I did that. How could I have said that? Wait a minute, what would I, why would I ever have done that? Like that rehashing and you're... And every time you rehash, it, does it ever get better? Do you ever think, well, I've rehashed that for the 95th time. I'm good now, right? It, <laughs> no. Or, or alternatively, you figure out how to like kind of let it go for a while and you're fine and you're fine and you're fine until that person walks in the room and that person was there when it happened and you can't make eye contact with them because then you'd be acknowledging that you know and they know and you both know what just happened maybe you don't maybe you're better than i am i sure do that <laughs> i think this is what's happening to peter like Jesus has conquered death, but Peter is being conquered by his own doubts and, and questioning about himself. And it is this kind of doubt that can destroy a person. I think that's what we're seeing here with Peter. He, he has failed, and he does not deserve to lead, or at least that's what he believes. And so Jesus beckons all the, God, all the disciples together. They're out fishing. He beckons them all in, has a fire. They get some fish uh, cooking on the fire. And as they're sitting there, a bunch of guys standing around a fire cooking some fish, Jesus kind of leans into Peter and he says, do you love me? And Peter goes, yes. Feed my sheep. Okay, thank, thank you, Jesus. And then, then Jesus leans in again and says, Peter... Do you love me? At this point, I'm sure Peter is thinking, I heard you the first time, right? And, and yes, Jesus, I heard you. And Jesus goes, T tend my sheep. And, and then Jesus leans a little bit closer and says, do you love me? And, and this is the point that we read in Scripture that Peter is deeply troubled. He is deeply grieved. He is bothered by what's going down. What, what is so bothersome about this moment? Why is this so hard for Peter? Well, let's think about it for a moment. Remember how I said the word for charcoal fire shows up twice in Scripture? This is the second time. Right? This is the moment at which Jesus has started a charcoal fire. Now, if you are in the city and you got a bunch of big buildings made of wood, flammable, all that, you want to have, have a charcoal fire because charcoal fire is how big do the flames get? Like a little small contained fire, put off a lot of heat, great for cooking, staying warm, right? If you are on the beach, do you want to make a charcoal fire? Like what type of fire do you make when you're on the beach? You get some driftwood to get together and you make a fire, right? But he, he, Jesus has made a charcoal fire because that's the fire Peter stood around when he, when he denied Jesus three times. What Jesus has done, as, has, he has recreated a moment so that Peter can get it right. right? Jesus, Peter denied Jesus three times and it broke him. And here's this moment at which Jesus has recreated the same situation. Bunch of guys standing around a charcoal fire, and he asks him the third time, and this is when it sinks into Peter. I get the chance to get it right. 
This is grace. This is a second opportunity. This is the moment that changes Peter's life. And out of that moment, Peter looks at Jesus, and he has a lot more to say this time, doesn't he? He says, Lord, you know all things, and you know that I love you. And Jesus says, tend my sheep. These verbs, what did Jesus say? Feed my lambs, lead my flock, tend my sheep. These are the verbs of leadership. These are the verbs that Peter has not been doing because he was so broken by the moment where he denied Jesus. And in this moment that Peter gets to do it right, Peter gets a second chance at it, this transforms Peter. And from here, he gets back to being the person we know him to be. And the church begins in Jerusalem and spreads up to Alexandria and they commission uh, Paul who then goes over to Greece and starts churches all across Greece and then they go over to Rome and start a church in Rome and go to Spain and they start churches across northern Africa like at this point Peter's back in the saddle and he's off and running and oh, here we go like the whole book of Acts unfolds from here it, it, it's all excitement and, and, and it's amazing what happens but it all begins when Peter is given the second chance and he leads the church and he does not lead the church because he is perfect, there's going to be a few occasions he just completely whiffs. Those are sermons for another day. He leads the church because he is forgiven. He has accepted that, and he leads the church which gives that forgiveness and offers that grace to others. This fundamentally is a story of grace, of how Jesus meets us where we are and offers another chance, another way forward. There is always a way forward with Jesus, for Jesus loves us as we are. Jesus comes to us as we are, not as we should be, not how we might think we have to be, but Jesus loves us as we are. There is a servant of the church who helped me understand the fullness of this, named uh, Brennan Manning. And uh, Brennan, uh, he was a Catholic priest, and then he was a Catholic monastic, and then he was married, and then he was divorced, and then he struggled all of his life with alcoholism and a broken family background. If you read his autobiography, uh, A Ragamuffin Gospel, it is a life that is just scattered, and, and he struggles with a lot. But what his touchstone, the thing he keeps on coming back to, is this simple fact fact. God loves us as we are. Not as we should be, and no one is as we should be. God loves us as we are. This is the story of Jesus doesn't change, right? We come to Easter every year and the story of Easter doesn't change. That Jesus, fully human and fully divine, in him, in what his life, his life is teaching, we see the beginning of the transformation of creation. That we in our sin rejected him, sending him to the cross. That Jesus forgave us. If anyone asks, when were you forgiven? It is when Jesus on the cross says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And so Jesus offers forgiveness dies, is resurrected, comes to the disciples, begins the church, the Holy Spirit moves, the church spreads across the world, and now here we are, able to face death unafraid because we are going towards the kingdom of God. That's the Easter message. It took me all of about 15 seconds, right? The Easter message is very simple. The powerful part about it is how it connects to each of our lives individually. Because before the resurrection, Peter is broken. He is broken because he has failed, and that's what he believes about himself. I am a failure. And after the resurrection, he is given another chance. He is given grace, and Peter is brought back to life, so to speak. And he lives a new life because he is given the chance to get it right. Jesus comes for us not as we should be, but as we are. Offering us a way forward. For in following Jesus, it is always a chance to get it right, even when we have not done so before. My friends, I am truly blessed because uh, Sophia still loves to spin. And, and after uh, she gets a bath every night and she gets out, wraps herself in a towel, towel I, I grab the edge of the towel and I spin the towel onto her and spin her a few times. I don't spin her from the hand. I... Uh, learned my lesson and uh, <laughs> but she still loves to spin and it is a joy that I get to hear that laughter and, and just she loves it and uh, that gut-clenching sensation of parent of the year that I had from years ago 
has let go. My friends, sometimes we get a chance to make it right directly. Sometimes, like Peter, we get a chance to do it again, and this time be faithful and be the people that Jesus calls us to be. Sometimes there are conflicts in our lives that will not be resolved this side of the kingdom of God. But as people who follow Jesus Christ, we know that we are heading towards the kingdom and that we are forgiven and we're heading to the place where everything will be made right. All of this because we learn, as Peter does, that we don't have to be perfect. Jesus comes to us as we are. Jesus is risen, and he rose conquering death that he might come for us. And if you need me to sit down and drink some coffee and tell that to you again, I will tell it to you again, that Jesus comes for you as you are. If you need me to say to that, hear, hear me say that every week for the rest, next year, I will do it. I will sit down with you every week and drink coffee, and I will tell you, Jesus loves you just as you are until you believe it. If there is one thing that we need to know, it is that Jesus loves us as we are, period, full stop, end of story loves us as we are. You let me know while we're passing the peace. You let me know after worship. You come find me tomorrow. I will tell it to you again and again. We are going to say it in just a minute at the, when we confess and we hear that we are forgiven again. Jesus loves us as we are. This is a day of pure grace that Jesus has conquered death for us just as we are. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand.